Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Real Estate Verse. Today, we're going to carry out a systematic overview of many of the real estate charts that I have on my website to get a better understanding as to where the real estate market currently is. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. So the real estate market is honestly not something I have a whole lot of experience with. In fact, I would guess that many of you are probably more experienced in the real estate market than I am. So I do want to come at this from a perspective of, you know, trying to be humble because I'm not, I'm not very knowledgeable about this space at all. Okay. With that said, you know, at some point, I think it would be nice to to more in, you know more get into the real estate market, um, and that's why I have started to follow it over the last few years, um, because I do find it to be uh, an interesting asset class. Up until now, uh, throughout my investing career, I've mostly just stuck with equities and cryptocurrencies and occasionally commodities. But for, and again, for the most part, it's just been equities and cryptocurrencies. Haven't really dabbled too much in the real estate market, um, other than for you know for for personal for personal stuff. So let's take a look at some of the real estate charts and and let's just go through them systematically. Again, I don't really have any predictions on the real estate market because it's it's honestly not something that I've um, you know that I've, I'm that familiar with. If we take a look at so we have the website here, the macro. We have a a real estate section. So I just want to go through some of them. So the first one is the purchase only house price index for the United States. And I'm going to scroll down so you can read the descriptions of these if you want to. I'm not going to go through every single one. But this is an interesting one because you can see how, I mean, it does just generally go up with time. Um, even It even went up throughout the entire dot-com crash, okay? So the real estate market certainly does not have to feel the same effects of, of every single crash in the stock market. I mean, this was like a two and a half year bear market back during the dot-com crash. And the real estate market, according to this, never really skipped a beat. And it wasn't until you know 2007, 2008, where it really started to roll back over, and it didn't fully bottom out until around 2011. Okay. Now, ever since then, it started to move back up. Uh, you can see that it moved up at a fairly healthy pace, and then starting in you know in, in really March of 2020 or so, May of 2020, it just shot up. I wonder why, right? Well, you know, you print six trillion dollars, and people are going to go look for a place to invest that, and the real estate market is, I mean, historically over very long periods of time, it has been a great place to to invest your money. Doesn't mean that there's not occasional bear markets, right? You can see we had a bear market over here. And note, by the way, that bear markets in real estate can last for years. You know, I mean, the, the, the last real one that we had, according to this chart, you know, lasted from 2007 until 2011. But I think according to some charts, it probably lasted even later, 2012. Also remember that it's a very localized thing. I mean, in some areas, you probably didn't even see house prices go down that much during that time period. Whereas in other areas, you probably saw them drop quite a bit. So it is a very localized thing. It's not like, you know, the real estate market in Austin is going to be the same as the real estate market in New York or Miami or Los Angeles or, you know, anywhere, right? I mean, it's, it's going to be different no matter where you go. Um, one of the interesting things though, is when you look at this, you can see that, you know, back over here in 2008, it sort of slowed down a little bit, but then it kind of just slowly crept back up, right? Like it, it slowed down and it almost seemed like it was going to come back down and it sort of did, right? Like you can see from, from June of 06 to July, it actually came back down a little bit, which was the first time it had come back down in a long time. But then it more or less reversed course for another, you know, three quarters of a year or so. So maybe three, you know, about three quarters or so, it, it then started to go back up. And it wasn't until the following year that it really started to come back down very quickly. One, way, one thing we could do is look at a month over month percentage change, okay? And, and you'll see right here, right? There was one month where it was negative, And then what happened, right? It just, it slowly scaled back up. And then we saw the, 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 the bottom of the real estate market fall out. Now, where are we today? Because, I mean, today is a very interesting time. We have interest rates that are, are, are you know, I mean, the, the Fed funds rates at five and a quarter. 
Uh, we have 30-year fixed, fixed mortgages approaching 7%. And if you look today, what has happened? You know, it, it, it scaled back some in mid last year, but really ever since August or so, it's been kind of slowly trending up, although some of these months have actually been slightly down. So you could more or less say it was down, kind of went up sideways for a bit. Some were negative, some were positive, but recently it started going back up. Okay, I mean, that's that's an undeniable trend. I mean, like, you know, the, no matter how you look at it, right? Like the last couple of months has been going back up. And I mean, again, over here, we, we saw something. I mean, it, it sort of slowed down and that might have given people the impression that the real estate market was going to roll over, but then it kind of, you know, just kept going back up for almost another year, right? Not quite, but almost another year, it just started going back up. And then in 2007, um, it really started to fall down, okay? Now remember, I would say that there is some there, there, there's some truth to the idea, in my opinion, that equities can go down and the real estate market can churn along, right? Just fine. But I don't think the reverse is true. Okay. Now there might be data out there to to disprove that, and I would be willing to to change my stance if if presented with data that did disprove that. But I would be, you know, my, my sort of thinking here, and it's at least supported by at least this chart, is that if the real estate market goes down, then equities would likely go down with them. One of the reasons I would think that is because a lot of people tie, you know, a lot of their net worth in real estate. And if, if the real estate market comes down a lot, then the wealth effect, I imagine, would take, take hold and, and people will just be less willing to invest in risk assets if if some of the, you know, if, if their entire net worth has gone down a lot because a lot of people do concentrate a lot of their net worth in real estate. So I think you could make the case that while equities can go down and the real estate market not care, if the real estate market goes down, I think equities do care. Okay, so I don't think you're gonna, you're, I don't think you'll typically see periods where real estate's going down, you know, significantly and equities keep going up without without skipping a beat. I mean, you can see here, once the real estate market started to turn, so too did, did equities, okay? But again, recently it started going back up. If you look at the month over month percentage change, you can see we, we did get you know a couple negative months right here. We had another couple of negative months right here, but recently it has gone back up to the upside. Now, if you look at the year over year percentage change, that tells a slightly different story, uh, mainly because you know while it has gone up some recently, I mean if you if you if you look at this, it has gone up some recently. It's still significantly different than the prior trend it was on. I mean the prior trend was basically just almost vertical, you know. I mean just going going straight up, um, but now this has certainly slowed down a lot. So when you look at a year over year percentage change. You might look at this in your initial reaction, and I, I've seen this happen on Twitter a lot as well, right? You see something going down, therefore you think it's contracting. That's not true, right? This is the derivative, right? It's a it's a year over year percentage change, and so as long as it's above the zero line, it's still you know the year over year percentage change is still going up. It it's just going up at a slower pace. It's like when you see, when you talk about inflation, right? If inflation's eight percent one month. And then seven percent the next month. It doesn't mean you're experiencing deflation. It means you're experiencing disinflation. You have, you still have inflation, right? It's just inflation isn't as bad as it was the prior month. So in this case, the year-over-year -year percentage change is still positive from March 23 to March 22. It's just that it, the, the percentage, the, the rate at which it's gone up is going. The, the rate at which it's going up is going has been going down. Okay, so you know, at one point back in February of 2022, you can see that the market was up, you know, 19% or so year over year. Now it's only up about three and a half percent year over year. And if it continues this trend, then it wouldn't take too much longer for it to go negative. Although you could argue that it, it, it's starting to level out a little bit, and and it it might start, um, you know, not it, it might start to to sort of. Uh, come into some type of a base, right? It doesn't have to just go immediately negative. I mean, it could come down to these levels over here, which is still growth, even if it's not, um, even if it's not as as high growth as we saw once upon a time. Okay, but that is a a, a very interesting chart to me because um, 
you know, you can see that it started to go back up. Has that happened before? Yeah, it happened back over here. It went up for another year or so. Uh, and then and then the market finally started to turn. But even when it even when it turns, I mean, it's such a long process. I mean, you know, this whole this whole process here of slowing down was in February of 06. And it didn't even really get back to that point until basically February of 08. I mean, it's a couple years. So this market, this market moves very, very slowly. Um, we can also take a look at the Zillow home value index. So if you take a look at that, I mean, it, it more or less tells a, a the same story, uh, except for, I mean, if you look over here, kind of plateaued, went sideways for quite a long period of time, and then slowly started to go back down. Um, where is it right now, right? It, it kind of plateaued here, it went back down for a little bit. It started to slowly go back up recently. If we look at a month over month percentage change, you can see that it's currently at around 0.3% or so. So it's still slightly less than probably the average over here, but it's not it's not it's not as bad as it was, right? Like it's not a negative territory. So you actually have seen that go back going back up as well recently. Looking at mortgage rates, always something interesting. Um, you know, the 30 year fixed latest at 6.71%. So, you know, if you think about mortgage rates, one of the reasons I think you could argue that that prices went down at the end of last year, or sorry, mid last year going into the third and fourth quarter, maybe the third quarter, is because there was a sort of like people were just shocked by high interest rates, right? And so a lot of people didn't want to buy houses. Um, and, and so the demand dropped, okay? But I think the issue right now for, for the Fed is that demand is, has started to come back some. Um, and it's not necessarily like insane demand, but I, I imagine a, lot, a large part of it is just there's not a lot of supply on the market, right? So the demand isn't that high uh, because interest rates are higher, but there's not a whole lot of supply. And so with the demand that there is, it's sufficient to, you know, to keep prices um, at, very, you know, at, at pretty elevated levels. Uh, just because no one really wants a lot of people don't want to sell um and who can blame them i mean if you locked in a more you know 30-year fixed at, at like three percent or less then it, you know it would be a hard a hard choice to to make a move especially if you plan on buying another house because if you're going to buy another house and you have to go from paying three percent to paying seven percent that's a that's a big decision right you're, you're basically going to have the same uh, a same the same more monthly payment for a house that's a lot less expensive. So, I mean, it, it's hard for hard for pe people to make that move. Now, I imagine there are circumstances that do require it. There's always gonna be people moving for a job. Um, so, you know, there's, there's always gonna be people that are going to be selling and buying. Uh, there could be major life events that could be going on or people get laid off and, and sometimes people just can't afford it. And so maybe they sell their house, but they're not looking to buy another one. They might be become a renter or something. Um, so that's something to think about. I mean, 30-year fix is at is at 6.71%. You can see it's actually been trending slightly higher recently. Arguably, the the you know people are starting to get used to higher interest rates as well. You know, one of the things I mentioned on on one of the prior videos that we did on real estate maybe eight months ago or so I don't know was you know I, I said one of the things we talked about is how you know six or seven percent in the in the context of history isn't really that high. It's just it's high to millennials because we haven't really experienced anything different. But in the context of history, I mean, like my, you know, when I when I talk to people that are um, uh, a generation older than me, you know, getting a house and having like a 13, 12, 13, 14 percent mortgage was pretty normal. Now, the counterpoint, of course, is that house prices were a lot lower. So it, it, it was a, a, a bit easier to, you know, to, to, to go into something like that. Um, but but the rates were were a lot higher at the time. Now we have really high rates and, and much higher prices. So I, it's it's of course very difficult for a lot of people um, to to really j jump into into home ownership. Although there are some charts that suggest that home ownership continues to stay on the rise. If we look at at things like delinquency rates on real estate secured loans, you can see that it's still pretty low. Okay, uh, at this time, I mean it's still pretty low. It has slightly ticked up recently, but um, not a whole lot. I mean. You can also see that it went up slightly during the dot-com crash, but it wasn't really a, a huge impact on the real estate market as a whole. Um, so nothing really too significant to look at here. And again, if you look at say like a year over year change, it is starting to get close to that positive territory, which historically isn't great for markets if it were to do something like that, um, but it's not there yet. And at the current pace, 
uh, it would still take a few months uh, just to even even get to that point, even if it were, even if delinquencies were to still go up. If we look at the net percentage of domestic banks reporting stronger demand for real estate loans, this is one of the things that shows you how how um, how little demand there is, right? This is for commercial real estate. I mean, look at this, right? It's it's down. I mean, it's at negative sixty seven point two percent. So again, this is the net percentage of domestic banks reporting stronger demand, negative sixty seven percent, right? So the demand has not been nearly what it you know what it used to be, um, but but the real estate market at this time, at least residential real estate, still holding strong. I know some commercial real estate is is starting to get into some trouble. Um, if we look at residential sales, the sales price of houses sold. So if we look at the median, you can see that it actually has gone down recently. Okay, so this is um, uh, quarterly data, right? So you can see like you know Q1 of 2022, Q2, Q3, and Q4. There's a big drop from Q4 to Q1, a big drop. And we don't often see major drops like that. So looking at, say, a quarter over quarter percentage change, this is pretty significant, right? I mean, the, you, there's actually, in, in, in all the data that we're tracking here, I, I'm not seeing a period where the quarter over quarter percentage change was as, as low as it is right now. If we look at a year over year percentage change, you can see that it's currently at 0.854%. Okay. Now there's only a few times in 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 over the last several decades that it's even gone negative, right? I mean, we have the 19 or the early 1970s. We have over here during 1982 where it went negative. You can see that it went negative back in the 90s, early 90s, and then also, of course, in 2007, 2008. Um, and then there was a period, a, a brief period right here where it went negative in 2011, and then also, of course, in 2019, and and um, and you know just you know in that 2019 period, late 2018, early 2019, and mid 2019. What's interesting is that normally when this goes negative, you can see that the stock market doesn't really like that a whole lot, right? When it goes negative, the, 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 it doesn't necessarily mean that it's like a major crash by the stock market. Um, there's a period in, in 2016. Um, or sorry, there was a period where was it? It was it was right here in, in the early 1990s where you know the market the market had a, a a nice little correction when the real estate market median sales of prices uh, uh, price of houses sold in the United States went negative, but I mean the stock market did pick back up once the housing market picked back up. But again, usually when it goes negative, um, it, it hasn't been a great thing. Right now it's not negative; it's it's still slightly positive. But I imagine that it it you know next quarter. This could certain this could certainly go negative. I mean, this is a big drop too, is is when you think about it. I mean, this was from thirteen point two percent to point eight five four percent over one quarter. So you add a couple more, you know, add two or three more quarters on here, good chance you're gonna see this, you know, see this go negative if um, if that pace continues. If we look at the new single family homes sold, you can see that actually been going up recently. Okay. And, and maybe looking at a year over year percentage change, it's actually positive, okay? So from this perspective, it looks like the housing market in the short term has picked back up a little bit and there's no denying it. I mean, now it could, it could go back down. Um, again, I'm not, I'm not an expert on real estate by any stretch of the imagination, but I do know that there's some seasonality to it, right? I mean, I think a lot of, a lot of listings go up in, Sort of the springtime, and 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 a lot of people are buying in the spring and summer, and then as you get later on into the year, uh, maybe it's not as you know not as as um, popular. But I don't I don't really know. I'm not I'm not that plugged into that. If we look at new houses for sale over sold ratio, you can see that actually it has been coming down, right? I mean it's been coming down somewhat quickly. If we look at it, say a quarter over quarter percentage change, you can see that it's negative. We've had plenty of periods where this thing was negative. If you look at a year over year percentage change, there haven't been as many periods as, as it was negative as when you look at quarter over quarter, but do note that it has entered into that negative territory at negative 10.59%. However, this metric does not always correspond to major drops in inequities, right? And there's periods where this goes negative and it doesn't really mean, it, it doesn't really mean anything for the equity, you know, for equities or, you know, the stock market in general. So not, not put too much weight to put there. One thing that I, I, I suppose you could say that higher interest rates have caused is that 
the amount of months it takes to sell a new home has been going back up. So we, we were at a, a level of about one and a half months. So, and I don't even know where that's coming from. I mean, I guess on average, maybe it was one and a half months, but from where I'm sitting and what I was looking out in the market, most of the, um, most of the houses that you were, you, we, you know, you would see get listed that were, you know, somewhat decent houses were going almost immediately. But I guess there are a lot of homes that might not be as desirable. And, and those of course could sit on the market for a number of months. So the average it ended up being uh, 1.5 here at the lowest point in late 2022, but it has come back up and now it's currently setting at 2.8. But if you zoom in here, you can see that it hit 2.8 last month and then it hit 2.8 again. So uh, this is still, I mean, the, the housing market is still, you know, somewhat tight in that sense is that, you know, the houses aren't really sitting for very long. Um, the issue is just that there aren't a lot of houses available, okay? So you have a situation where, you know, demand, there's still some demand, even at higher rates. Maybe people want to make cash. Maybe people just don't care about paying a higher, higher interest rate. Um, but you don't have a, a ton of inventory. And so, you know, we're, we're kind of in a sticky situation there. If we look at housing starts, like housing units started, you can see that it's actually been trending down since, um, you know, really since early 2022. A year-over-year -year percentage change shows you that it's currently negative, and you can see prior periods when it was negative here on the chart. And I mean, again, normally, normally risk assets don't like this, but again, there are periods where it didn't really seem to matter, right? So you can find examples where it did matter, and you can find examples where it didn't matter. And there's plenty of periods over here in the '90s where it went negative and it didn't really seem to matter much at all. Okay. I mean, if it, if it goes very negative, right, like 2000, 2009 or like in 1975 or in, um, you know, 1970 or so, right, if it, if it gets very negative, then I imagine it would have some type of more material effect on risk assets in general due to things like the wealth effect that we previously talked about. And if we look at housing units under construction, you can see that it's also potentially found a... a a local top, but it's really hard to know because, you know, I, I suppose you could make the case that it's 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 going to slowly come back down. Last month, it actually went back up a little bit. So you could make the case that it's sort of in this process here. The counterpoint, of course, is that there is a period back over here in the 1980s where it, it sort of started to roll over um, in, in 84, and then it just started to pick back up again and didn't really start a downtrend until 86. So again, that was another, another two year period where it, it seemed like it was about to go down, but then it actually went back up before actually and then coming to coming down quite a lot. And if you look at a year over year percentage change of this metric, you can in fact see that significant moves to the downside on this do tend to correspond to recessions. Okay, you know, you have exhibit A, exhibit B and C and and so on and so forth. Okay, so when you get when you get major moves like this, it does tend to correspond to recessions, which of course is the gray shaded region on the chart. Right now, this metric is currently at 0.359%. So it's it's in danger of going negative, but it's not negative just yet. And you'll note that there are several periods over here where I just went slightly negative and, and then the, the market just sort of picked back up again, okay? So going negative isn't even really that big of a deal. It's, it's if it goes to say, you know, like negative 30% or something. Um, that tends to be an ominous sign for, for the economy in general, like negative 20%, negative 30%. That's more of a more of an issue. Right now, uh, you know, it's at 0.359. The month before it was at 2.27. Before that, it was at 6.64. If you were to look at a month over month percentage change, um, you, can, you can see that we have had some negative months, although it has not been that detrimental just yet. And then finally, I wanted to look at this chart. This is an interesting chart, the home ownership rate, because it, it actually is kind of interesting because it, it it tells you something that might not be that obvious, like in the home ownership rate, meaning um, if you're not familiar, I mean, it's just the, the proportion of households that are owner occupied. That's actually been going up. Um, I mean, it, it found sort of a local bottom here back in, in the summer of 21. It's actually been going up recently. So I know a lot of people feel priced out of homes and and not and not and wishing they could afford one. Uh, right now, home ownership has has been back on the rise. Um, so people people have been, uh, you know, still still buying homes and whatnot. And when you can see it was back in in 2004 and 2005, it was all the way up here at around 
69% uh, or so. Back in, in um, you know, March of 2020, it was uh, right around April, it around 67.9%. But again, it's it still, still is slowly going up right now. Do note that the level that it currently is at is actually the same level that it was at back in the early 1980s when we also had a period of high inflation and where we actually had to uh, two recessions back to back to actually get that inflation under control. If you look at owner's equity level in real estate, you can see that, you know, I mean, it generally trends higher. There are periods where it goes down. One of the periods where it went down was, of course, back in 2007 and 2008, 2009. And you can see that it bottomed out here in about early 2012. Now, this again, this normally goes up, right? If we put this on a log scale, you can see that it normally goes up. But there are times where it goes down, like back over here. And also recently, it actually has been going down. Okay, but the rate at which it's been going down looks to be, um, uh, you know, getting getting better, right? Like it's not getting worse. And you could picture that by looking at a quarter over quarter percentage change, right? Like you can see that the first quarter was was pretty negative at negative one point. Let me switch to a percentage. It was at negative four point six eight percent, then negative three point four two, then negative two point two three. So it has been going down. But the rate at which it's been going down um, has has been uh, decreasing, right? Like it, it hasn't been going down um, as as much as, or at least the, the rate hasn't been as bad as it was. But again, I mean, it still is going down. And if you look at a again, if you look at a year over year percentage change, when it when it goes negative like this, historically it's not a great sign. Um, but even in that case, I mean, it, it can take a long time to play out. I mean, look at look at this back in in the doc uh, or in the financial crisis. You can see that it went and first went negative in 2006. But we know that the market, you know, the, the real estate or the equity market didn't really start to turn until a year later in October of 2007. So this just went negative here in, in, I mean, you can see that it just went negative here in January of 2023, right? And this is a quarter, quarterly, quarterly thing. Uh, and, it, and it just went negative um, last quarter. Okay, so again, these, these, these things take a long time to play out. And I guess the question is, is, does it play more out like one of these where it's, it's sort of just down here and then right back up? Or does it go a lot deeper? Like we did during the during the financial crisis. If you look at the rental vacancy rate, um, you know it's actually been going down uh, ever since 2009. Recently, it's starting going back up, right? So like since January of 2022, or so early 2022, you can see it's it's it really started to go back up. It, it hit a low here in October of 2021 at 5.6%. And then a double bottom here at 5.6% in April of 2022. And then it's been slowly trending higher. And it's currently sitting at 6.4%. If you look at a year over year change of that, you can see that it has in fact gone positive, right? Um, which of course is not not a healthy sign if the if the if the vacancy rate is going up, right? That's not a not a good sign. Um, but that's where it currently sits. And then the last thing is is kind of an interesting metric, the furniture and home furnishing furnishing sales. Um, very cyclical metric, right? Very cyclical. And I mean, you can see that it, it normally tops out here uh, at the end of the year, as it's reported, right? December. Um, and I mean, right now it's it, it's kind of hard to read, honestly, like on, on shorter time frames. But um, yeah, I mean, if you look at it sort of from like a, a, a bird's eye view, let me remove the price of the S&P and, and recessions as well. Um, it has slowed down some, right? Like this pace that it was going up at, seems to have slowed down some but i also don't think you can look at this and say that it's entered into a sustained um period of contraction right like it's hard to know at this point it could be rolling over but it's also hard to know uh just because we, we don't really have a whole lot of data anyways i think we'll wrap it up there this is my you know these are some of the charts we have in the real estate market again i'm not an expert at it just wanted to talk about uh what's going on in the real estate market provide some opinions and, and just try to become a little bit more aware of what's going on. And, and maybe in the future, I will uh, I'll get into the real estate market myself. Anyways, if you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up. And again, check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at IntoTheCryptoverse.com. Thank you for tuning in. Subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.